Hello, everyone. You are listening to the Genealogist Journal podcast. Twice a week, we take a deep look into the interconnecting roots of history and genealogy. I am your host, historian and genealogist, Jenny Finson. Hello, and welcome back to the show. Today, we are going to continue our investigation into the possible murder of Rachel McIntyre. Rachel was a woman of mystery. Born in Ohio, her parents are unknown, but her siblings never lived very far away. As with any life, Rachel's was filled with twists and turns that led her down a shocking and yet fateful path. One day, Rachel disappeared. When asked, her daughter stated that her mother had died, but a local preacher, out of concern for his parishioners, alleged that Rachel had been murdered. Are these allegations of murder true? Let's find out. So to recap the story so far, Rachel McIntyre, the subject of our investigation, was born about 1827 in Ohio. She was first married to Andrew J. Vance in 1844 in Mercer County, Illinois. They proceeded to have three sons, and then in 1851, her husband Andrew left her and the kids to chase after gold in California. After living with her brothers for a bit, Rachel went to work as a domestic servant for the Michael Halstead family. While working there, Rachel met and married one of the Halstead sons, Daniel. They had three children together. Michael, Lydia, and Rosa. That is where we left off in our last episode. You can find the first half of Rachel McIntyre's story in episode 16. Now, what happened next? In the last episode, I alluded that it was at this point in Rachel's story that it gets a little wild and possibly shocking for some. But first, let us introduce a new player, an Englishman by the name of George Barrett. George was the fifth child of Richard Barrett and Emma Payton. He was born February 2nd, 1851 in East Garston, Berkshire, England. To get a sense of where East Garston is, on the map directly between London and Bristol sits the quintessential English country town. When you imagine the English countryside, East Garston fits the bill perfectly. The town is known for its horse trainers, If you have ever watched the British television show Midsummer Murders, you get the idea, without all the murders. Funny note, there is not a West Garston. They explain the town's name on their website, which I will post a link to the town's site to my website on genealogistjournal.com. If you get a chance to take a look, please do. The town has an interesting history. So, The Richard Barrett family living in East Garston was listed in the 1851 English census. Just as a side note, the UK also has a population census every decade as the US. We have ours at the turn of each decade, you know, 1850, 1860, and so on. The UK holds theirs a year after the turn of a decade. For example, 1851, 1861, you get the idea. Anyway, Richard Barrett, George Barrett's father, was listed as 39 years old, working as an agricultural laborer. What that exactly means, I'm not sure, but we can assume he was in agriculture. Richard is married to Emma, with six children listed. George Barrett, the youngest, only a few months old. George's older brother, William Sidney Barrett, was listed as 16. William plays an important role in George's story, and ultimately in Rachel McIntyre's. According to a family record, William was in the British Navy and a royal guest at the crowning of Queen Victoria. I have not verified this. Remember, this is just the family record as told to me. Being a royal guest at the crowning of Queen Victoria seems a little far-fetched, but you never know. The family, William and his wife Hannah Snowden, and four children came to America on September 26, 1869. Note, his obituary says 1867 was the date of his arrival. Apparently, there was a terrible storm while at sea, and everyone thought the boat was going to sink in the middle of the Atlantic. Honestly, September is a little late to be sailing across the Atlantic pond. Anyway, the ship workers called for anyone who could help. William, being a sailor before he married, went up and helped to take in the sails. It took seven weeks to cross the Atlantic. The family first settled in New Haven, Connecticut for two years. 
Then they moved to Joy, Mercer County, Illinois, where they farmed for five years before moving to Smith County, Kansas in 1876. Two things are important from the narrative above. One, William Barrett moved to Mercer County, Illinois around 1870. During the 1870 census, they were still in Connecticut. The census in New Haven County was recorded on June 9, 1870. Their youngest son at the time, Charles, was listed as one years old, born in England. That places their arrival in America between the summers of 1869 and 1870. Now, so how does George Barrett, so pivotal to Rachel's story, figure into this picture? Well, records and family stories place George Barrett's immigration to the U.S. in 1870, around the time of his elder brother's immigration. So did they come over together? I don't know. There is a George Barrett listed in the 1870 New Haven, Connecticut census. He was said to be 30 years old, single, living and working with a Mr. Thompson, born in England. It does not give an immigration year. Could this be the George Barrett of our story? I don't know for sure. The birth dates are 11 years off, and that is quite the age gap. Not unheard of in record keeping, but still, that is quite a gap. I will make note of this George Barrett, but I can't verify if he is or isn't the George Barrett connected to Rachel McIntyre. The George Barrett of our story should be about 19 years old. Now getting back to our point number one, sometime after June 9th, 1870, the William Barrett family moved from Connecticut to Mercer County, Illinois. George Barrett either moved with them or joined them shortly thereafter. This places George Barrett in Mercer County at the same time and in close proximity to the Daniel Halstead family and more importantly, to Rachel. At some point between the summer of 1870 and March of 1875, Rachel met George. Now, what the early days of their romance looked like, I don't know, but we do know that Rachel was married. We have all watched enough love stories in movies and on television to imagine how it went. During that four year span, at some point, Rachel decided to leave her husband, her family, and her life to run away with the young Englishman George Barrett. We can find them in the 1875 Kansas State Census. What is a curious thing about George and Rachel running away together is that Lydia, Rachel's middle child with Daniel Halstead, was listed with them in the census in 1875. Lydia was eight years old at the time. I have to ask, why Lydia? Why not Rosa, the, who was the youngest? Besides, where was Rosa? Where was her older son, Michael? Did Rachel and Daniel Halstead get a divorce? Weirdly enough, Daniel Halstead falls off the map. Did he die? And that is why Rachel hooked up with George? He is not in the mortality schedules in Mercer County. I checked, but I can't find him in the 1880 U.S. federal census. He was not listed with his eldest son, Michael Zebedee, who had just recently been married in the Mercer County 1880 census. Now, getting back to Rachel, she was listed as Rachel Barrett and 40 years old in the 1875 census. Actually, Rachel was about 48 during that time. And I know this for a fact that they were not married. I have their marriage certificate. It was dated February 12th, 1877, two years later after 1875. They were married in the house of the groom in Pawnee Township in Smith County, Kansas by a minister named J.T. Stones. John Harlan was the probate judge who signed their marriage certificate. Of note, Rachel lists her age as 30 years old. She should have been listed as 50. That's crazy. That is a 20 year age gap. Clearly, someone is lying. Now, one of the reasons why George and Rachel went to Kansas was homesteading. At that time in Kansas, it was a viable way to own land. So what that is, is you had to prove that you lived on a piece of land, you were assigned a claim, and you had to prove that you lived and improved that piece of land for so much time. Then the county would deem the property yours. So they homesteaded on a farm in Smith County, Kansas. 
George's brother William and his family joined them in 1876. They also homesteaded. Now, if things hadn't gotten interesting enough, here is where things get truly interesting. George, Rachel, and Lydia are listed in the 1880 U.S. Federal Census as still living in Pawnee in Smith County on their homestead. George was listed as 29 years old, Rachel as 40, and Lydia as 15. The census was recorded on June 17, 1880. This is where Rachel falls off the map, or into a well, as the minister had attested. The state census did not start keeping official death records until 1911. Most counties in Kansas did not keep death records before 1885. Also, Rachel is not listed in the cemetery, in Pawnee, or in Smith Center, or anywhere in the county. The last mention of Rachel was by her daughter, Lydia, in a court case. On Friday, August 12, 1881, the Smith County Pioneer newspaper ran an interesting article. Here is what it said. George Barrett of Pawnee Township was arrested last Saturday on the charge of adultery. Four girls, one of them his own stepdaughter, all underage, are his victims, and it was on their testimony that he was bound over Squire Jones last Monday for his appearance at the October term of court. In default of bail, he now lingers behind bars in the lockup at this place. The trial in the district court will be one of the most shocking and disgusting that ever came up in this county, and Judge Holt's modesty will most severely be mangled before the trial is over. The judge will probably call a pro tem. I'm going to interject a side note here. A judge pro tem is not a regular judge, but someone, usually a lawyer, who is brought in to serve temporarily as a judge with the consent of the parties. Back to the article. The judge will probably call a pro tem to hear the evidence, in which case we would suggest Webb Macknall as a fit person by reason of education, attainment, and prejudices to preside and render justice to the defendant. A fellow feeling would make Webb wondrous kind. Catch on? I'm not sure what the last bit meant. It obviously had some significance then and in that place. So, Rachel had died or was murdered, probably in late June 1881. Later in the summer, on Saturday, August 6th, 1881, George Barrett was arrested for adultery with his stepdaughter Lydia. Lydia, who was 16 at the time of George's arrest, was already seven months pregnant. Two days later, on August 8, 1881, Lydia traveled to Smith Center and married George Barrett, who was still behind bars. They hoped that by getting married, the charges would be dropped. It didn't work out as they had planned. The charges were not dropped. Remember, Lydia was seven months pregnant at this time, which placed conception in January of 1881. She was 15 when she got pregnant. By the time Lydia gave her deposition in October of 1881, she had already given birth to their daughter, Mary Ellen, who was born September 30th. Could there be any more surprises in this case? Yeah, there can be. Join us next time to finish up this sordid story of love, sex, and possibly murder. We will read the deposition given by Lydia in October of 1881. It is filled with lies and confusing statements and an outrageous claim. We will sort through it all to make some sense of her statement. Also, we will post the entire deposition on our website, genealogistjournal.com, so you can take a look for yourself. If you liked what you heard here today, subscribe to our podcast on Spotify to hear all of our episodes. Also, check out our website at genealogistjournal.com. Join our community for access to more content, genealogical tips, and dynamic genealogical and